Welcome to the city of Miramar. This is Connect, where we keep you connected to what's important. I am Johnny Douglas, your host, and today we will be discussing building a sustainable business foundation. As our guest, we have Mr. Mark Lieberskin. He is the senior financial representative for Principal Financial Group. How are you doing, Mark? Very well, thank you. And yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you for being here. We also have Mr. Tom Sadler, who is founder and CEO of Sadler Law PA. Welcome to our show. Thanks, Johnny. Great, great to be with you again. I'm glad to have you guys here. You know, um, most businesses, most business owners put a lot of time and effort in developing their business, developing their business plan. They, they know their product, they know their services better than anyone, and they can articulate, very, articulate it very well. But one of the issues that I think they miss are the little things that can become catastrophic if something happens to their business. And so what we want to do today is we want to discuss a business foundation that is substantial for your business that should any calamity happen or anything happens or any partnership venture or, or goes the wrong way, that they have that cover. So that's what a lot of businesses um, miss the mark on. And I'm here, I'm so happy that you guys are here today to help us clarify some of those many little pieces that may seem small, but can cause a lot of damage in your business if they're not taken care of, okay? Sounds great, John. Okay, great. So I'm going to start off with um, I'm going to start off with you, Tom. I'm going to start off with the basic business formation. Okay, now when people hear that basic business formation, what what exactly does that mean? Well, 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 Johnny, thanks for having me here, and I appreciate it, and and enjoy being here with uh, being able to chat about business owners. I, I do have to, as a lawyer, I have to sort of put out a, a little bit of a disclaimer in that. You know, none of what we talk about is going to be specific legal advice here today. Uh, it's going to be certainly generalities and, and doesn't really, uh, this isn't effectively, uh, doesn't create a, uh, a relationship with any of your viewers or, or any of your listeners here, but it's, it's here for informative purposes only. So I'll just put that out as the legal disclaimer at the beginning, just so, so folks don't take this advice and, and run out and, and start, uh, start doing things based on the advice I give. And, and that's probably the first thing that you know, a lot of folks don't understand about law is it's, you know, it's not the sort of thing that that one size fits all, or if you just have this one key concept, you, you're able to, uh, to run with it. I mean, that's, that's kind of the place for the legal stock and trade there that you really every situation is an individual situation. And you really should seek, seek that sort of legal counsel and, and guidance that's related and tailored to fit to your specific circumstance. And that's, that's one of the first bits of advice that I would have for, for anybody out there that either has a business or is starting a business. Um, you know, there's a lot of products out there that folks will go to and, and it seems really easy to start a business that you just throw some stuff on a piece of paper or, you know, file your letters or your, your, your articles in corporation with the uh, Florida department and off you go. And, you know, that, that can leave you in a, in a really tough situation mm -hmm. if some bumps hit, hit you and, and you hit a few bumps in the road there. Okay. All right. So, right. And that is so true that um, I remember when I put together my business plan, it was a very basic business plan. And after listening to you um, and our group, referral group, explain some of the possibilities, I thought, wow, I missed a whole lot. Um, so one of those, what are some of those things that business owners can kind of put a grasp on if, say, for example, there's a partnership, a sole proprietor, or what kind of liability to, to formulate it under? What, what, what are some of those things, advice that you can give them um, as not as a lawyer, but as information about how they can and go I, about it? And Johnny, I think that's one of the biggest things to, 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 to tell folks. I mean, certainly businesses start, I mean, a lot of times businesses start kind of organically that we just, we, we know something that we're doing and we start selling it. Maybe it's a, a farmer's market or we have a skill or we start doing it. And a lot of times businesses just, you know, we, we don't necessarily start with A, B, C, D, you know, kind of things come together. Maybe you start doing a business while you're working for somebody else. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, you wish you did cross all those T's and dot all those I's, but a lot of times the business just picks up and starts going 
right. you start doing what you're doing with your business and you are so focused on what you're doing with the business that you don't necessarily mm -hmm. think about some of those other things, some of the planning steps that you may have skipped right. in advance. Um, you know, I, I think the starting point for any business, as you've probably found, having started a small business yourself, the basics of business formation and that foundation. And what you're really looking at is, you know, there's a number of different structures, but normally they fall into to sort of four categories. You'll have your partnerships, you have sole right. proprietorships, right. Uh, limited liability corporations, and a, a general corporation as well. Um, probably the simplest form there is the sole proprietorship, which is somebody who just kind of starts doing business on their own. They're the principal person. They're doing all the bookkeeping. They do pretty much, uh, pretty much right. everything out there. And it's just that one individual. Um, you know, usually when somebody starts out like that, eventually they're going to run into issues where they got to figure out how to file the taxes or they got to right. figure out how to do payroll or they got to figure out how to do their bookkeeping. And from there, they'll start to ask those questions as far as, you know, is the sole proprietorship right. the best structure for me? How do I move into another sort of structure? Right. And the other thing that, that creates a problem for the sole proprietor is you're individually liable. I mean, if it's just you and you're doing the business and you're out there doing something that, you know, somebody gets injured or, or somebody does something that, uh, you know, uses some product that you have and hurts themselves, you know, you can be individually liable and find yourself in court, you know, answering a lot of questions and, and exposing a lot of possibly the assets you have, maybe your home, maybe, you know, savings or, or some of those sort of things. So it's one of those sort of liability things that you right. really have to think about as well. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mark. I'm, I'm going to pause this for a minute. I have <laughs> Brandon back there. He, I, I took. Okay. So, Mark, thank you so much for explaining the difference between liability corporations and, and um, structural, how to structuralize your, your business from that perspective. Um, what do you think about? People enter um, an agreement and something happens, say partnership is dissolved, one passes away. How does that work? And, and Johnny, that's kind of where uh, that's kind of where this pre-planning comes in as far as the, uh, the structure that you, you put together. Sole proprietor, well, any of these any of these sort of structures that you have, whether it's a sole proprietorship, your LLC or your corporation. Um, you can do them without any organizational documents whatsoever. You can file with the uh, Florida Department of Corporations up there and, and really have minimal paperwork. But the thing is, for most companies, you, you really do want to have some kind, of a, some kind of written agreement or some kind of written operating agreement. Um, you know, that, that's kind of the difference that you focus on with uh, LLCs versus corporations. An LLC is going to have something called a, uh, an operating agreement. Um, if you have a corporation, it's going to be known as a shareholders agreement. But this is really where the, the heart and soul of your company is. It, it really lays down all of those details about your company as far as what your company does, how your company is formed, what your company's ownership structure is. And good agreements are also going to anticipate how does that company wind down? How do you, uh, right. you know, getting into the business is one thing. Everybody's excited and gets into the business. So you don't necessarily want to think about the downside of it, which is, right. you know, a, a lot of businesses do break up. A lot of businesses do fail. A lot of businesses, you know, don't necessarily, you know, completely succeed. And certainly there, there's another aspect of it, which we'll talk, to, we'll talk about a little later, <laughs> which is that succession planning. Um, you're mm -hmm. not going to be working in your business forever. You may be looking to retire. You may go on to another business. You may want to leave that business to, you know, your family or your children or, or you know, your, your partners. And, and those are things that you really want to start thinking about. And it's one of those things that I encourage my clients and, and business owners to, to, to really sit down and do that kind of agreement, right. make the time that it takes to sit down and do that written agreement. So you think through these issues, whether you do it right at the beginning of founding your company mm -hmm. or whether you do it as you're, as you're kind of on the fly there, it's good to take that time and really mm -hmm. sit down and, and give some thought to those issues, Johnny. And that that's that's very um important, uh, Mark. I I mean, um, Tom, because I know that many people don't think about those things going into a partnership. Most partnerships um, bloom from friendships or being related to each other. So you figure, ah, you know what? Hey, you know, we've been friends for a long time. You know, it's my cousin, it's my brother. You know, but those things happen. Um, once those things happen and a business is resolved, dissolved or anything, Mark, um, if the person wants to 
like sell their business or how would they do that? Well, how do they determine a fair purchase price and the value of their business? How, how do they do that? Are there, is, is there a method to that? Well, first, let me start off with, uh, with the basics here. I've been in the financial arena for 30 years. I've been visiting a lot of small to medium-sized businesses. When I see when there's multiple partners, I ask them, first of all, if you have a buy-sell agreement. Yeah, I'm going to get two I'm going to get two answers, yes or no. The yes question is, when was the last time it was actually reviewed? Because if you had a business that was valued over half a million dollars, now it's worth over a million dollars, well, that buy sell means absolutely nothing. And if you don't have one, you got yourself a problem too. Tom's going to go a little bit more into the different buy sells over there. But when I visit a business, we talk about what is your business worth? You know, the value of a business influences when, to whom, and how much you can sell your business for. It's also potential impact your retirement and the ability for your business to continue in your absence or an event of disability. When I see with business owners, I'm going to ask them five questions. One, do you know what you could sell your business for today? A lot of times they give me an answer. They're just, they're just looking up in the sky and just pulling it out. Two. When was your last business valuation done? They either say, hey, maybe six years ago, or no, never. Three, what if you become partners with your partner's spouse? What does that mean? That means, Johnny, let's say me and you went into business. And at that point in time, we were both married. You pass away. Your wife's going to want part of the business. Now, we, we love each other, you know, we go out to dinner, but it's you I have the relationship with. Four, what impact would your departure have on the value of your business? Mm. And the last one, does your business represent a substantial part of your planned retirement income? I've sat with many people over these years, and I said, what have you done for your retirement? They say, you know, look at the four walls here. That's my retirement. You know what the value of it is? Do you know, you know, today, if you were to hand the keys over to somebody, what would you get for it? Do you know how much it's going to last? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's those five important questions on that. I'm just going to send it back to Tom now to tell mm -hmm. what, what is it really a buy-sell agreement? Because this is, this is his expertise. Because okay. if I uncover somebody who needs a buy-sell or haven't had a review, mm -hmm. Tom is the man that I would, you know, refer to. Tom? Give us an idea of the different buy cells out there. Well, thanks, Mark. I, I, I'd love to go over that a little bit. And it, it's interesting because I think from Mark's end, he's actually, you know, he deals with these buy sell agreements. Usually, when people have, have actually started to think about the buy sell agreements, which, you know, for a lot of people, for like 90% of the businesses, you know, the, the, probably 90% of the businesses aren't even thinking about doing the buy sell. Mm -hmm. So, Mark gets that kind of elite group and even the ones that don't have a buy sell agreement they're that much further ahead in that at least they're thinking about doing it because I think the vast majority of businesses out there really really don't think about doing the buy sell agreement and they don't think about that business succession and they don't think about where their business is going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years out and I encourage my clients really you know when you're thinking about a business or if you have a business you know, think forward and work back as to, you right. know, where, where do you want to be? Where do you intend to be? Where are you likely to be? And then work back from there and try to put together a plan that's based on that vision for the future. And that's where really this whole process of, uh, of buy-sell agreements is such a great, it, it's such a great um, exercise for people to go through. It really makes them think about things like, what is the value of our business? What does our client list look like? What does the transition of our business look like? And, you know, some folks start business where, you know, one individual will, will put in money, another individual will be putting in time, another right. individual will be bringing other assets there. Right. You know, how have we valued those? And a lot of times you'll find you have two or three individuals in there with a very different idea of where the business is, who the business belongs to, what the ownership percentages are. Um, and I find for a lot of businesses, they... They like to avoid those discussions. I mean, it's it's very analogous to marriage. I, I mean, a, a lot of times we, we don't want to talk about that with the spouse. We don't want to talk about some of these things with family. And it's also very similar to what I go through in my estate planning, which a lot of times 
these are difficult questions. They're hard questions. They're questions we've avoided. They're discussions we've avoided having for years. So why should I bother having it now? And, and that's the, the kind of hump that, that I really try to get my clients over. And, you know, sometimes we're successful in getting folks to look at it. And sometimes we're not. And, you know, those businesses where they don't have this kind of, uh, this kind of planning in place really leave themselves exposed. Um, and, and this kind of planning isn't just for when I die or when I sell my business or when I decide I want to retire or when my business fails. It also, it puts an infrastructure in place for, you know, businesses certainly find themselves in, in situations where they're sued. Um, sometimes there's partnership disputes. And these are the kind of agreements, these are the kind of things, if you think about them in advance, right. if you think about the worst case scenario and then work back from there, you know, you have a plan in place, you have an idea, you have a chance to have these discussions in circumstances which aren't, uh, you know, the term you use, catastrophic. There's circumstances right. where you can actually head those, head those problems off in advance. You know, and, and I think one of the things that we have to bear in mind is that uh, it's kind of like you have to separate business from friendship um, and it's just business. It, it just makes good business sense. And a lot of people shine from those kind of hard um, hitting and questions because, well, you know, I've been knowing this guy, I grew up, grew up with him, I've known him for over 30 years, you know, and him, him and I were like, you know, like, like, we're like blood brothers, you know, it's, but the same, in the same respect, um, I've learned even in what I do with, with the city, it, that it, that's business. You know, I, I can't have someone that I met in the chamber come and do work at my house and says, oh, okay, you know what? I need to fit. No, no, it's business. You're running a business. <laughs> right. If you don't have, if there's not a local discount you're offering everyone else, don't offer it to me. <laughs> right. are, have, it's just business. Leave it as business. You're in business to make money. You're in business to do business with me. And so I think that's how it should have to be with anyone who start even a, a business together, a joint venture. Uh, and and really, you know, there, there, it's certainly being guided through it by a, by a lawyer is important, but, you know, more important is trying to sit down and get this stuff into writing um, and, and really going through that process. And, and I, I like to tell people that, you know, if you, if you don't have it in writing, you don't have it. it it's not a plan. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a hope or a wish or whatever, but it's not a plan and, and you need to have it in writing. And if you don't, you haven't done the work that you really need to do and you're really leaving yourself exposed. But. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So it leads to another question when you, when we're talking about um, a business either dissolving and someone wants to sell or, or you want to, you want to know more information about that. Uh, how do you determine if funding will be readily available for you during, a, uh, during that kind of transaction? How, how do you determine that? Um, now, let me answer that one. Yes, Mark. Yes. Okay. Um, here at Principal, we are one of the forerunners in small and medium sized businesses. What we have, we have what we call an informal complementary uh, business valuation. So, what mm -hmm. is that? What is a business valuation? Business valuation will tell you what the value of business is. It compares your business with other businesses similar into your, in the same area that you're in. It uses five of the most popular accounting. One, the adjusted book value. Two, capitalization of earnings. Three, excess of earnings. Fourth, discounted future cash flow. And five, multiple discretionary income. What does this all mean? This means that for every, for every business, there is one of those categories that will be best used. What we do offer this, and if you go on your, out on your own and go to a, you know, a CPA that does something like this, it could be anywhere between 500 and a few thousand dollars. And we call it, we call it informal, okay? Because it's not, if the IRS ever comes to you, they're gonna want you to go to a CPA. But to give this, complimentary business valuation will show you exactly what your business is worth. You want to sell it. You want to, you sit with Tom or somebody like that and you figure out what your buy sell, what the value of a business is. If you become disabled and there's, there's just many reasons why people would use this informal valuation. So what do we need to get the informal valuation? It's very simple. 
First of all, the business has to generate over half a million dollars a year. Number two, we would need the last three years of the tax return. The K-1s, your profits and loss, if you're an S corporation, your personals, if you're a C, then you have the, uh, you know, your, your tax return on the business. After that is done, we send it off to our CPAs in our headquarters. And within a week or so, they will come back with a 30 page report on where you are at. At that point in time, I would recommend sitting with your attorney, sitting with anybody who makes the decisions, along with somebody from my company with me on a conference call to tell you exactly how this thing is read. People are taking advantage of this. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Again, like I said, it's, it's in, informal. And I also go back to the buy-sell agreements because there's a, there's, there's, there's a saying, or I should say, in one of our brochures, and I'm going to read it verbatim, and I just think it is so important for the people out there. As Tom kind of mentioned this, an, an effective buy-sell agreement can allow you to have the right amount of money in the right place at the right time. A properly funded, well-drafted agreement that reflects your goals can help protect you during planned and unplanned events, including retirement, death, disability, divorce, or termination of the business. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you deal with your decision makers, your center, your center of people, your, your, your CPA, your attorney, your financial person, and then make sure that this is in place. Because I've seen over the 30 years I've been in this business, a lot of places, a lot of business that had a partnership had to dissolve because they did not have uh, buy sell in place or did not have a proper buy sell in place mm -hmm. and that's where that's where people like tom i refer business to because that's mm -hmm. what he would help these people you build up your you build up your you know your business how many years it takes to build it up it can all mm -hmm. fall down in just a short amount of time if it's, if it's not properly i buy sell agreement or properly funded wow. tom you want to mm -hmm. add to that yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I can give you some examples of, of times when I, I, I've had clients that, um, you know, thought they were business partners, were, were sold into a business and, and brought a substantial amount of expertise into a business and were promised interest in a business. And then lo and behold, they're, they're fired from the business. And it's like, well, wait a minute, how did you fire me from the business? I'm a partner in this business. <laughs> We've been partners for three years. Suddenly this one, you know, the one partner is firing the other one. And, and these are the sort of things that you know, if you have that kind of evaluation done, if you have this kind of planning in place, it avoids those surprises there. And, and you know, it's really interesting because I've done this with a number of clients that, you know, sometimes proving your interest in a business, you know, how do you distinguish yourself from being an employer? How do you, you know, that promise, that handshake that was made between you and the other business partner, the promise that was there that, that you had an ownership interest in it, how do you prove that up? Um, and a lot of times that can be really, a, really a big challenge. Um, you know, the, the product Mark has there with this business valuation is, is fantastic because for, you know, certainly, you know, the smaller to medium sized businesses, they don't necessarily have a team of MBAs. They don't have the ability to go out and hire a bunch of consultants that are going to put mm -hmm. together those metrics to figure out, you know, where's your business coming from? How's your business working? And, you know, being able to go to somebody like Mark and have their, their mm -hmm. back office there evaluate that and, and come back to you with an analysis of what your business looks like, what the capital structure is, how much your business is worth and how much they're willing to, to put an insurance policy together for. It's really invaluable and, and it's a wonderful, a wonderful guidepost for your business going forward and also helps to get everybody, you know, especially in those situations where you have multiple partners or, or multiple owners or, or multiple, uh, you know, principals within the business. It helps to it helps to get everybody on the same sheet of music, so to speak. Well, that that sounds fantastic. Now, I'd like now for both you guys to answer this question here: Is this these type of um, business agreements that you're talking about? Is it for just major corporations, or can small businesses use this um, scenario as well? Anybody who owns a business. Anybody who owns a business. Anybody who owns a business. Again, anything can happen. It could be a single person. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Just a single person is, what do you want to happen to your business when you're ready to retire? You want to keep it in the family. Another, okay. another thing too is, I, and, and again, this is where Tom comes into play, but I've seen this over these years. Person A owns this business. He has three kids. A, a child is going to be in a business. B and C will not be in the business. So what will happen is that at the time when the guy time wants to retire, he gives it to A. Well, B and C child says, where's my money? If, if my, if, you know, if he gave, you know, he gave you the business and the value is worth a million dollars, what do we get? Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, you should, again, that's not necessarily a buy-sell agreement, but that's just, that's just basically having how you're going to succeed your business to your, to your heirs, to your next person. Again, that's where Tom comes into play. People don't realize a lot of stuff that can happen. You took many years to build up this business. Right. It can fall down within a matter of days if it's not properly have the proper funding, have the proper you know uh, trust in there. Now, again, that's Tom's forte, but I've seen a lot of people have problems with that. I'm Tom. I'm sure you sh could share a story or two on that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean the, the 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 succession business planning is is such an important thing. And again, I I, I take it it's analogous to a family. I, I mean, a lot of times you have a business that you know, it, it will focus on one person and that one person will be, I mean, they call them what they call them, our key man policies, right? That's the key man that's in right. there. And, you know, and, and if you lose one of those partners, um, a lot of times they've given no thought to, to who's going to take over or how's this business going to go forward or is it just going to, to dissolve? You know, none of those discussions have been made, but the dynamic completely changes when you lose that one individual. And then you have the issues of estate planning as far as, you know, if, if one person, heaven forbid, in the business dies, you know, does his share of the business get left to the spouse, to the children? Right. Are those spouses now partners in that business? Do they get to have a say in the day to day of the business? Mm -hmm. Do they get to just take their their third out of that business or, or whatever mm -hmm. it's been determined to be? And would the business still be able to survive? Um, you know, a lot of times these are hard conversations and, and difficult conversations to mm -hmm. have. But it's important to have them in a circumstance where you can discuss them and do something to, to resolve them. And that, that's the kind, of, the kind of products that Mark has out there help to facilitate those discussions and, and help to push that in the right direction. Um, so Johnny, Johnny just, just to answer your question, which you asked, does that have to be a large corporation? No. It could be a single man. Right. It, could be, it could be a large corporation. They all have the same problem. Okay. It's just that the, the mega stores or whatever have just a larger problem. But to that small, to that one owner, to him, that's a major mm -hmm. problem. Can affect his problem. legacy on his business. So it's important. It's important that you, you know, you cross your T's and you dot your I's mm -hmm. and make sure. And yeah, Tom said it's a, it's a, it's a uh, conversation, especially if you have a partner that you, know, you don't like having. But you have to have it. Right. You have right. to have it. Right. Right. And, 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 you know, and because of the climate that we're in, we just left two years of being um, iso in isolation and businesses um, trying to bounce back from this pandemic. There's a lot of businesses who kind of met in this scenario where they're at, where there were business partners and now the business is not doing well. What do we do now? How do we salvage what we have and how do we get how do we make sense of all of this? So that's why I wanted to bring this type of conversation um, to the forefront, because I know there are a lot of businesses who are struggling with this and they may not know what to do. Um, so if they're in a situation like this um, and they hadn't done all this work that you're saying do now, what are their options now? What, what, what kind of options do, you, do they have now? Um, and, and, from, and, any of, from any of the scenarios. <laughs> And Johnny, just to add what Mark was saying, in, in, you know, addressing that question you had about what size it is, um, I'm doing I'm doing a buy sell agreement now for mm -hmm. for two clients that have been doing business together for for ages, and now the the one the one individual is a little bit older. It's a professional services firm, mm -hmm. and they do you know kind of a similar thing, referring business back and forth, and they've kind of partnered on different projects. Mm -hmm. The older individual wants to get out of it and retire now. 
And I can tell you, it's a, you know, for two people who have worked together for a very long time and they're, they're really good friends and they, they know each other and they, mm -hmm. they've, you know, gone back and forth a lot. But to try to structure that, that buy-sell agreement, it takes a lot of work and a lot of thinking yeah. and, and a lot of unpacking what they've been doing over the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years to really get that into the place where, yeah, this is what this is worth and this is what we're going to pay and this is what the book of business is worth and this is how we're going to structure our earnout agreement. So it really, it's worth the effort and it's worth, you know, putting the time into doing it and doing it uh, on, a, on a more frequent basis rather than, you know, Mark talked about reviewing these agreements and, you know, obviously getting up the hill where you actually have the agreement in place is your mm -hmm. first big success. But but after that, you want to revisit that agreement and you want it really to be a, a living document so that, you know, your company, your partnership, your your um, your LLC is, is having a meeting, you know, not infrequently to, to review that. And so and how how far along in the business should they start this process? Should it be done at the at the planning stages of the business? Or how far along should it go when the business started and they start making uh, profits? How long, is, how long, of, how should this be done? When should I, it I be? mean, it, 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 you know, as far as how involved or, or how, you know, how simple it needs to be, it, it doesn't need to be the be all end all of huge, pro you know, for smaller businesses, it, it can be a, you know, you might have a, a, a one and a half page operating agreement or a, um, mm -hmm. you know, a, a very simple shareholder agreement. But I think, you know, to, to answer your question, there's no one size or, or one time that you should do it. It's okay. something that should be kind of infused into the organization. And it's those kind of discussions that partners should be having, you know, on a relatively frequent basis as the, as the business grows and evolves and, and relationships or, or goals change. Okay. That's awesome. That's I think awesome. I think especially if it's partners that needs to be done from day one. Day one. Okay. Uh, day one. Now, just like Tom used that, it's it's a living, breathing vehicle because it changes. Right. Because right. what will change is the value of the mm -hmm. business. Again, I've seen that many times that they they both put in and a half, uh, maybe a hundred thousand dollars each mm -hmm. year one. Five years, it's worth a million dollars. Their buy sell is based upon the original of hundred thousand dollars each, so it should be reviewed every so often. Like I said, I've visited many people over these years and asked them about their buy sell. Yeah, I got it ten years ago. Well, the value of business is the same. They go, no. I said you need to have it reviewed. It's again, it's a living, breathing instrument that you have to constantly. But majority of people, here's the point. Majority of people don't know out there. All they do know is that I will know how to run my business. Exactly. That's why, exactly. that's why they need yeah. people like me and Tom exactly. to educate them. We're not looking to sell anything. We're looking to educate them on out there what they should know. Don't, you know, I'd rather be proactive than reactive. Right. So, again, you know, what they do is great. They run a business, but they don't know. And it's, it's podcasts like this which educate businesses what is out there what are some of the advice that some of your local expertise people like tom and myself can give them you know there are um, i'll show you one page here it's a 30 page report but this is the one page that shows you the the columns if you can again i don't know if you can make that out it's, nope. it's, it's because you have your blur on. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. That's right. 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 <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's but, yeah. Yeah. but but I would, right. but well, I it, it gives you five columns. Now the next question is how can you do this? How can you get this? First of all, I use the word complimentary. That's what it is. We don't charge for our time. Mm -hmm. but what I do ask is that when we do hand this over to you, we have a conference call with the people that put this together so you have a better understanding. Okay. If it's something you'd like to do business with me, at that point, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Your business with Tom, again, it's, it's up to you. But it's, it's complimentary on it. And I'm sure that we'll put, uh, Johnny will put our information, how to contact Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can, you know, you can, you can contact me. I'll send you a, uh, a, a sample of what a, what a in, you know, formal business valuation looks like. Is a one-page uh, form you fill out. It's simple enough, but when you get the results, man, you're going to be amazed. A lot of things you did not know 
about your business compared to other businesses out there that are in the same boat as you. Awesome. And, and I mean, gonna, it's, it's, it, and Johnny, it's just a, a wonderful product. And I, I guess probably the, the most important thing about it is it, it really jump starts companies into doing this kind of planning. And I think that's mm -hmm. the, the one thing I, I also suggest to my clients is that, you know, you want to have a team of advisors. Uh, a lot of times mm -hmm. folks try to do everything themselves, but everybody isn't a lawyer and everybody isn't an insurance agent and everybody isn't a CPA. So you really need to have these discussions. You need to know what you want to do. And you also need to have that team of advisors that, that are there for you to, you know, go to for advice on these sort of things. Um, and I think that that's one of the other things about doing this kind of planning and getting these kind of valuations in place is it really starts to put your mind in the right place. It starts to put the business organization in the right place and, and creates those good habits. You know, I think, and I, I appreciate that too, um, Mark and Tom, I appreciate your time here with us because this is a very timely and needed conversation for business owners out there. Um, I, I think, I think the, while you're in your planning stages and while you're deciding where you, where you want to conduct your business or all of that that comes into play, this needs to be a part of it. You need to get yourself an advisory team. I'm going to put a disclaimer in too. I cannot support any one uh, business um, through the city of Miramar. But what I can say <laughs> is that I know the two of you and I know the work that you do. I can vouch for the work and the credibility of what you do. I can do that. So um, if there's any business out there who are looking at this, listening to this podcast, looking at this podcast, these guys, are they really know what they're doing. They really can help you. And, to, and the one thing I loved about them both is their sincerity. They're, they're going to make money. That's what they do. That's why they're so. That's why they are substantial. Have have sustained themselves as long in the business. But what they really want to do is offer their advice to you. They want to make sure that you have the right tools going into your business, so that your business can be can sustain itself and grow. Uh, and it can grow knowing that if anything happened along the lines of your business. Anything that comes up, whether it's death, separation, divorce, whatever, you are prepared to meet those challenges um, head on, and your business can be safe. Everybody who starts a business starts a legacy. That, that, that's all there is to it. You, you, no one starts a business and say, okay, uh, once you put me six feet under, just you know, close the shop up and just be done with it. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, no one does that. <laughs> At least they don't start off doing that. Right. If it happens, it happens, but they don't start right. off. So, um, and, and Johnny, I just have to, I just, I, I just have to echo what you're saying there about mm -hmm. the, the business professional. You know, certainly Sadler Law is happy to help any of your listeners with the questions they have. They can get in touch with me. But whether it's Sadler Law or whether it's any other law firm out there, if you want to go to you, the biggest law firm downtown Miami or, you know, or the, 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 the shop on the corner, talk to some attorneys, talk to some people with some background in this. Get comfortable with the person that you're working with and develop that long-term relationship. The same thing with Mark. I mean, there's a lot of insurance agents out there, a lot of, but there's people that you're comfortable working with. And, and that's what you really need to do is get to that level of comfort. And you need to be out there building that team a little bit so that you have a good CPA, you have a good insurance agent, you have a good attorney. Right, exactly. I agree with you. Shop around. Start here first. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, guys, I really appreciate you being here today. I really think this was, like I said before, a great conversation for business owners to understand. They're, most people know the basic and the, um, and the practicalities of writing up a business plan, but it's these little details that you uh, we talked about today that are not little at all. <laughs> They're just overlooked. <laughs> and we want to try to make sure that they focus in on those on, on those uh, meaningful uh, pieces of their of structuring their business. Um, if you are a business in the city of Miramar and Pembroke Pines as well, the Chamber of Commerce is a place for you. It's a place where you can network with other like-minded businesses, business owners, connect, get referrals, but also who create long lasting relationships through the Miramar Pembroke Pines Chamber of Commerce. And if you are a business in the city of Miramar, city of Miramar would pay for your first year in the chamber. So make, take advantage of that. Go on our website, www.miramarfl.gov. 
you can go and check out our, our landing page at the Economic and Business Development Department, where we have a lot of webinars, a lot of uh, resources, a lot of uh, programs and, and financial institutions that, we, that we're partnered with to help your business succeed. It's at Miramar, miramarfl.gov backslash EBD. And last but not least, sign up for our Business Post newsletter. Our Business Post newsletter gives you all the information and details of what's going on in the city. Uh, uh, we'll keep you up to date on what's, well, the events that are going on and anything that's coming out there that you can take advantage of to network your business. That's on miramarfl.com backslash business pulse. And so, as I always, you know, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Can I, can I just, can I just say something about the chamber? Yes. All right. Johnny kind of touched about the Miramar Pembroke Pines Chamber of Commerce. I will tell you this: I've been associated with them for almost seventeen years now. We are growing. Sure, we all came out of pandemic. You know, we lost members, but we have gained so many members. If you our business person in Miramar, and looking to increase your business by dealing with many likewise business people, the Miramar Pembroke Pine Chamber of Commerce is the place to go. And if you do join it, be involved. There's leads groups, there's networking groups. Come out and see us. Come out and see what Miramar Pembroke Pines Chamber of Commerce is all about. And the big advantage that Miramar gives you, as Johnny is saying, they will help the first year supplement your membership. But just don't if you become a member. And I encourage you to do that. And if I would recommend you to be active. It's the only way you're going to make it. Because people, everything being equal, you're a business owner out there. Everything being equal, if you people get to know you, guess what? They get to like you and refer people to you. So the bottom line is, it's part of your business plan is to increase your business. There's no better way joining the local chamber, the Miramar Pembroke Pines Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you guys so much. And as I always say, be kind, but most important, stay connected. Okay.